Hello, welcome to another Drones Deep video. Today I'm in the little village of Sutton Valley, it's just outside Maystone, and I'm going to try and get a nice photograph and some video of the Sutton Valley Castle. Uh, I don't think I can get it all on shot here, so let's move along. Yeah, it's quite a small little castle, but it has uh, some quite interesting aerial views and some quite nice views from uh, above as well. You can just see all the way across uh, the lovely Kent countryside. And uh, there's some quite nice trees around and they're just about to uh, turn that lovely golden yellow or golden brown colour. And it's just approaching autumn. So I'm hoping that uh, one of the photographs I get will uh, make a nice photograph to stick on the wall somewhere. Double checking the uh, flight restrictions in the area because I know there's Headcorn airstrip quite near here. I can hear some uh, airplanes going over. But as you can see here, the only flight restrictions are actually the uh, Headcorn Air airfield and the East Sutton uh, open prison. So if I can find somewhere dry enough inside the castle, I'll take off and just go vertically straight up in the air and try and get a nice aerial bird's eye shot. Okay, this is part of the video where I take one of the photographs I've taken of the Sutton Balance Castle and uh, uh, make a, a photograph that I would be happy to frame and put on the wall or something I'd be very happy to put on my Facebook and Instagram Instagram accounts. I did take quite a few photographs from above the uh, Sutton Balance Castle so now it's just a case of going through them and selecting one that I'd be happy to uh, put on the wall. I mean, something like this would be nice. Um, it's a little bit, <laughs> it's a little bit uh, crooked, but obviously I can straighten it up. And also there seems to be an idiot flying a drone in the frame, that would be me. So yeah, to be honest, it's quite easy for me to take that, that out, but I will, I'm gonna keep looking, see if there's anything else that uh, takes my fancy and these are very samey but this one's a nice I like this one um, I will have to crop all this area out here am I in the frame yeah there's me down there idiot here we go that right like, this is a one I think I saw before which I really liked um, you've got the staircase going up I'll probably try and get rid of the road if I can and also to crop this area out here and mm, there's a house here that uh, it should be okay i think if i put a vignette on it <laughs> a vignette on it uh it should be okay the dji mini 3 pro has a camera on it now that flips around to actually take proper uh portrait 
style photographs. So there's no need now to take landscape photographs and have them to crop to make it look like a portrait photograph. So I will be using a portrait photograph. But these are nice photographs. Hey, look, there's me going down there, look. <laughs> this location, is, as you can see, it's um, covered with trees. So it's, uh, it's quite important to make sure that when I'm flying the drone around, I can actually see exactly where it is and I'm not gonna um, collide into any leaves or any, any branches. Uh, that's not too bad. Uh, that would be nice if it was actually a portrait photo. Same again with that one, plenty of color in that. To be honest, when I'm doing this, it's normally, I go by gut instinct. It's normally the first one I see. It normally is the, uh, the one I'd use. And I think for this instance, I will be going back to the first photograph that I liked if I can find this one here 0061 a little bit of work to do I think what I will be doing like I said earlier is cropping out the mess up here um that house in the background it's not too bad crop out this road here uh, maybe get rid of the information boards there and there I'm not in frame so that's all good all right so what I'm going to do with this one is I'm going to try and see how much I can crop out without losing too much uh, quality in the photograph. I'm losing the top end there. Uh, let's move the, the castle actually into the center of the photograph. Right, what I'm going to do, I'm going to leave the saturation as it is, but I want to try and bring out a bit more of the color of the red and oranges and lose some of the green. So with the saturation, I'm just going to bring the greens down. You can see that the greens sort of uh, become a bit more uh, dark and dull and then bring up the oranges so the oranges come out a bit and the yellows oh no not the yellows but the reds can we bring the reds up uh, that's a little bit better and the lumacy right again with the greens i want to try and darken them off a bit okay come on off you go uh, i do reds brighten the reds up not one way brighten the reds up and the oranges darken those off that's a little bit too dark. Uh, I'll try not to lose too much of the highlights. That'll do nicely, I think. Highlights, okay, hopefully bring those up a little bit. So the castle sticks out a little bit more. That's better, and the whites, that should be, yeah, that's better. Um, my favorite thing to do at the moment uh, is also give it a, uh, a big net. Uh, so I'm just gonna do that one way. Just to draw the eyes a little bit more into the castle itself. Right, I'm happy with that. That's a little bit dark though, to be honest. Uh, let's bring the exposure up a bit more. That's better. Right, I'm happy with that, that'll do for now. Uh, going to open it up into Photoshop, and then I'm gonna go into image, and then go into adjustments, levels, just bring up the whites a little bit more. What I'm going to do now actually is get rid of the uh, information boards here and here. Uh, I will use the clone tool. So I will take a little bit of this grassy area over here. Use it to... That's perfect. <laughs> and also down here, use this shadow here to just cover this over. I'm happy with that. So we've got rid of the notice boards. I'm not in the shot. Now, do I put a blur effect on it just to bring out the castle a little bit more? Yeah, let's give it a try. Let's go. Let's create another layer. And then we're going to go to filter, blur gallery, iris blur. That's too much blur there. So I'm just going to stretch out the handles just to take it out a little bit more there. And down here so I don't lose too much of the staircase. Less is more when it comes to blurring, in my opinion. Right, that's good. I'm happy with that. Uh, next thing I need to do is just to uh, add my watermark. This one will be going on to Facebook in a second. Um, if you are a Photoshop professional, <laughs> or someone who's been using Photoshop for uh, longer than me, if you have seen things I'm not doing right, please let me know. I'm pretty sure there are. But this is the way I've always done it. Um, sort of learning on the job, really, or sort of learning as I go. But uh, I'm happy with that. That will be on Facebook, on my Facebook group, and I will remove the watermark and then add it to Instagram as well. That has been Sutton Valence Castle. 
on October the 11th, and that's it. So hopefully I might do some more of these type of videos where I do a little intro and then show some uh, video footage and then do a, just talk through how I create a fight graph afterwards. Like that's it, cheers, thanks for uh, watching. Comment, like, and subscribe obviously, and I'll see you again very soon. Cheers, cheerio.